Welcome back to the Binding of Isaac Rebirth! This is Challenge 9, Demo Man, and conveniently enough, you unlock this challenge by beating Momzar 9 times, so I'm sensing a team here. This challenge is all about the new item that we've unlocked after we finish our last playthrough, which is Dr. Fetus. This allows you to throw bomb and hit enemies, and in overall, it's a pretty neat power up, but. Well, in theory it will be a neat power up, but as it is right now, this upgrade is bugged because it doesn't deal the amount of damage that it's supposed to do, but hey, in the very least, at least, we can pretty much nuke everything, so we've got that going for. We also start with the remote detonator into this one uh, challenge, which makes it so that whenever you throw the Dr. Fetus bombs all over the place, you can choose whenever they explode, so you've got some more control over what you do in the course of this challenge. And finally, we also have the matchstick trinket, which makes it so that you have an higher chance to find bombs, but it's totally pointless because your main weapon is bombs that you just shoot like your regular tears, so all in all, it's completely useless. And look at that, we're in the cellar for the first time ever. And the first thing about the cellar that you'll notice is, there's a lot of spiders. I really hate this place a whole lot because I honestly feel that at the point of the game, you're gonna fight a bunch of enemies that I really think for the most part you're ill-equipped to deal with. A lot of the enemies are way too strong for that moment in the game and honestly it makes going through the cellar a huge pain. But yeah, Dr. Fetus is bugged because it's supposed to deal 40 additional damage with all of the damage it's also doing. It scales off your damage value and it multiplies all of the damage by 3. Also, the item that we got in the shop is a broken watch. It has a chance to make it so that in certain rooms, all of the enemies will be slowed down permanently, but some other time it can also speed up the enemies, so you gotta watch out. Yeah, we could throw our bombs at this thing. Oh, I don't want more bombs! What the hell is up with this? Once again, I'm never gonna use these bombs, so it's not as if I really need to get items that give me even more bombs. The second that I get a trinket that will allow me to collect something which is other than bombs, I will gladly swipe out of it. So, all in all, even though that Dr. Fetus is really nerfed a whole lot into this game, or at least it is right now because it's going to be fixed whenever Afterbirth will come out, but it's still a pretty easy challenge for the most part, because in the end, bombs still do a lot of damage, it allows you to keep enemies at bay pretty easily, and the second that you get a couple of damage upgrades, then you're pretty much set for success. And with the remote detonator, you get even more control over what you're doing with your bombs. Also, what the hell am I doing here? Am I trying to kill myself or what? Oh, and there goes the music again. Every single time that time will be stopped, well, it's pretty easy to see because you can really hear it because the entire music will be slowed down to a crawl. Also, I have no clue how the hell I even got into this room. I thought that normally when you have a secret room right next to a challenge room that requires you to only have one heart, if you don't have the required only one heart, then it's going to be sealed off as well, but I suppose if you lock the door, then you're still going to be fine. Also, I handle this fight really terribly. Usually, you can pretty much just stop Dingle right in its track by just shoving a bomb right in its face, and it's just going to collide against the bomb and make it so that it will be impossible for it to even charge at you, but at this point, I'm not really thinking. Honestly, that's a challenge that you pretty much just do on autopilot also. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't really think that there's anything that I'll get in here. Missing page 2 is not really worth it, and Guppy Z is not really worth taking for this challenge. You want to keep the remote detonator, and finally, Guppy form is not really useful whenever you have Dr. Fetus as a form of attack, because 
Your bombs do not spawn flies, so therefore you're losing into that aspect. And yeah, we got an eternal heart at the beginning of this floor because of the trinket that we have. This is Maggie's fate and you start every floor with an eternal heart. If you want to build up your health supply, it's a pretty good trinket and it's especially good if you play as one upcoming character that we will have pretty soon because that will ensure that you will get free health pretty much every single floor unless that you're really bad at the game. Also, god that music sounds weird whenever it's slowed down. Oh hey, another playthrough where we're going to get a whole lot of new stuff. I always like those. So, yeah, mom's toenail, but what does it do? Well, I'm just gonna hold off the description until we see for ourselves what it does, because it's definitely a surprise indeed. But once that we're gonna get it, I'm pretty sure that we're going to go back to Maggie's fate, because... Honestly, it's not really a playthrough where you'll tend to do a whole lot of deals with the devil because the only items that you'll want will be the ones that will boost your damage, but other than that, there's a bunch of items that you can just skip altogether. There's a few items that you can get in a Dr. Fetus playthrough which will pretty much enhance your bombs in a really dramatic way, but we're not very likely to get them in this challenge considering that there's no treasure rooms and most of the items in... Okay, so that's what mom's toenail do. Every few often and so, mom is just going to stomp you out of nowhere or an enemy and it hurts a whole lot. And yeah, that's also what the remote detonator can do for you. Oh, tears down. I'm really saddened about that. Okay, with that said, however, we got a new item that we're going to stick. Hey, what is this? That's something we haven't seen yet. Yeah, every so often, you will get a trapdoor whenever you're bombing a rock that will lead to a crawl space, a la Zelda one, where you can claim a random treasure. And sometimes it can even lead to the well-fabled black market, which is full of very valuable shop items that you can buy in exchange for your hearts. But it's very, very rare, so don't expect it to pop up too much. As for the item that we got, we got the inner high. We got this in another playthrough, but it was uh, by re-rolling like, uh, our entire loadout of items in a dice room at one occasion. So what it does is, we're shooting three bombs at a time, but unfortunately the drawback is that our firing speed is really, really low. But on the flip side, almost every... Almost everything that we're going to hit will just instantly die without any kind of question whatsoever. So, all in all, I think it's a fair trade-off. Also, I never noticed how come the torso of Polycephalus pretty much looks like a smiley face in itself. So yeah, our bombs might be puny, but whenever you shoot three of them at a time, Bosses will still die pretty quickly, and for a boss like that, it's a pretty fair trade in overall because usually it will just pop out of the ground for a short instant of time, and during the time that it's up, then you can blow it up to pieces. And yeah, right now we can hear the speeding effect of the time of the broken watch, but thankfully it happened in a room where there was no enemies whatsoever, so we got lucky this time. Also, yeah, once again, these jerks. Goodbye. This is one of those times where I'm really happy that we can shoot three bombs at a time, because at least you can be sure that they will die pretty much uh, all at once. But with that said, whenever you start getting swarmed by enemies, this is where you'll have to start busting out the bombs, because otherwise you might end up having too much of a slow firing rate in order to handle everything going all around you. Now, here's for another fun thing that you can do whenever you have bombs. I want to collect this rock, well, I can just blow it up toward me by throwing a shitload of bombs toward it. 
And now we got the dream item whenever it comes to Dr. Fetus. We got the lucky rock. Every single time that you blow open a rock, you get coins. And that's as amazing as you think it is. That pretty much assures you of having infinite money in the course of pretty much every playthrough that you get it in because... Well, infinite bombs as well as uh, infinite rocks pretty much is a match made in heaven. But yeah, earlier you could see the difference between my regular bombs and the Dr. Fetus bombs. My regular bombs are somehow way stronger than three Dr. Fetus bombs. With that said, now that I have the Lucky Rock, I might as well just go and look for the store because I'm fairly certain that we're gonna have business to do here. That's the fun part of the remote detonator. Whenever you have enemies that you know will be in need of a bomb, then you can just uh, wait for them to calmly go toward your bomb and there you go, they're a nuke forever. Buying the battery item will be completely worthless because the remote detonator is an item that doesn't rely on charges, so therefore you pretty much use it whenever the time is near. And like I said, the remote detonator is a very vital part of this playthrough, so all in all, you'll never really want to get rid of it. And at this point, I have absolutely no complex with uh, leaving the paperclip behind because I have more than enough keys in order to finish this playthrough. Now, the thing that probably will matter will be to get a collection of bombs again in order to deal with the tougher enemies out here because... Uh, Usually, it's not a good thing to only have one bomb whenever you get to this point of the playthrough. And yeah, Guppy Scholar is not going to help us help us out too much. But at this point, I don't really think that any of the Guppy items are that useful in this playthrough to begin with. Maybe Guppy Z in some extent, because I think they will deal higher damage, because Dr. Fetus do boost your base damage, but... And overall, it's nothing to really be excited about for the most part. And yeah, that's the kind of thing that you'll only do in a challenge, because you know that your keys are not gonna be used anywhere else. Usually, it's just going to be a terrible idea to do that. Yep, batteries are completely useless. And so are keys for this entire floor. <sighs> With that said, we're starting to hit our first strong enemies because you can easily tell here that unless I hit the enemies with all three of my bombs, they will not die. But things will get worse as soon as we meet the Globlins, aka the Red Freaky Dudes. These ones, however, are gonna be a pain. Oh, here they are! Speak of the devil! Yeah, as you can see, my firing speed is just barely fast enough for me to kill them. And right now, it's only failing, by the way. Yep. This is the kind of room where you probably will want to nuke your way out of the door, but I really cannot resist nuking every enemy out of existence every single time that I play this game. I just think that running past encounters is a cowardly thing to do. Also, I cannot wait until we get to a room full of rocks in order to show off uh, what the Lucky Rock is capable of, because so far it's been really tame. We're just having a few trinkets of money every once in a while. But whenever we'll have a big rock room, then we'll have big, big money. This skull is a big rock, but unfortunately it's not made out of money. The Shario team, thank you for listening. I really miss the time where being invincible and killing every single enemies with a, a big ol' horn will just make it so that you will just have a kick-ass fanfare. Instead, it just speeds up the music, and this is kind of me. But yeah, see what I mean with lots of rocks, lots of money. By the time that we got into this room, our money more than doubled. So all in all, it's a really good thing to have. And War is here in order to want his money back, but he's never gonna get it. Yeah, I was talking about Devil Deals not helping out too much during this playthrough, and yeah, I really didn't get a whole lot of Devil Deals, period, but 
To be fair, I lose hearts in almost every single level that I play right now, so it's definitely not helping. Also, yeah, playing slots is definitely riskier now. At this point, you're almost better off just nuking every machine that you come across. And at this point, I have so much money that I'm setting myself up to just have yet another meeting with Greed. Joy. <laughs> Yeah, here how come the music is speeding up? Yeah, that's the broken watch in action. Sometime it will indeed speed up the rooms, but with Dr. Fetus it's really not an issue for the most part because you can still keep things very well under control. And that was not keeping things under control at all. I could have been able to just destroy this entire room really easily by just squeezing in and throw all of my bombs really fast, but I kind of bungled it up. Just like this. Excellent. But hey, at least opportunities of bungling mean that you also get more money. Also, why the hell am I talking about bungling? Oh my goodness. But at least this one room here is going to be perfect in order to resupply or stockpile of bombs in order to help out with those sticky situations. Oh, I'm really thankful that time slowed down for this really tricky room. I sure am grateful, game. But hey, it's still good that we even have that to begin with, so let's not be too picky for a change. So now that we're here and we have these items, there is really nothing left to the challenge. All that we need is to make it all the way to mom's heart in order to win. Yeah, that's right. It's another one of these challenges where you have to go all the way to the distance. Oh, all right. Yeah, this room, however, can be pretty nasty whenever... Well, not this room, but any room that involve uh, those invincible skulls that just go all over the place. Because they can ruin your entire day. So yeah, here's for another item that we got, it's the boomerang, and that's pretty much the extent as to where and how we'll use it, because honestly, it's not a very interesting item. It can snatch items from a distance though, so at least it's got that going for it, and yeah. We've got Curse of the Lost, so you can be sure that I will spend quite a while in order to figure out where I'm going, because I have absolutely no sense of orientation whatsoever. I need the map in order to figure out where to go in this game. Also, I've been told that I use the word at this point a whole lot, or, well, the phrase, but really I'm not entirely sure what I can do about this, because that's been an habit that I've had ever since a very long while, to just take certain phrases and beat them all the way to the ground. And every single time that I figure out that I'm abusing a certain phrase or anything, then it just gets replaced with another phrase. So, yeah, at this point I'm not sure there's anything that can be done with it. You'll have to forgive me about this. Oh hey, it's been a while, Ultra Pride. Also, a weird glitch that has sometimes happened is that whenever you meet Ultra Pride, there are times where instead of spawning a Florian himself, aka the other guy who programmed the other uh, Isaac game, aka the one that was uh, for free and everything, well, sometimes he's just replaced by a baby angel. Not sure if that has any kind of meaning. Also, I have no clue why I use my Book of Revelation that will give me soul hearts for free and then not use a free charge that I have. Maybe I just guess, hey, I'm gonna get three soul hearts until the upcoming room. I am a genius that can see the future. But yeah, Book of Revelation is a really neat item because it's a constantly refilling blue heart that you can activate every six rooms. For early runs where you will take a lot of damage, it can be a lifesaver. And additionally, the Book of Revelation is the way that you will use in order to make it so that you can build a super meat boy or a bandage girl, because if you activate it in a floor, it will guarantee that the next boss that you will fight, unless it's a predetermined encounter like mom, mom's art and everything, the boss will be a horseman. 
And will horsemen give either the cube of meat or the ball of bandages? But some other time you will meet instead, well, the headless horseman, and eventually you will meet another jerk that is replaced by every single trigger out here, and which is just going to make your life a living hell, because he doesn't give any of these items, but he's considered to be a horseman regardless. At this point, I'm hoping I will be able to get myself a super meat boy or a super meat girl, uh, wait, Bandage girl! I shall know I help beat this game for crying out loud. Hey, we've had so little luck with devil rooms that instead we're getting angel rooms, and we get one of the best items of the entire game. The holy mantle makes it so that you can just take a free hit in every single room. So all in all, this is amazing. And yeah. Now we're fighting the angel inside the angel room. Essentially, once that you beat either the dark room or the chest for the first time, we had got a prompt that will say the angels are waiting. And this is what it means. It means that we can now provoke these angel statues and whenever you destroy them, you get a key piece. And what do these key pieces do? Well, we'll figure it out because so far we haven't seen any kind of door or anything where this key will fit in. But yeah, there are two of these key pieces in order to get. And if you get all of them, well, something will happen. So, alright, only two more floors to go in. Yeah, even when time slows down, these enemies continue being complete dicks because... For some reason, the mask part of this enemy doesn't slow down like the heart would. I have no clue why this is happening, it's probably yet another glitch, but it's another reason to hate these enemies so much. I really, really hate the little mask of infamies. These are just the kind of enemies that, unless you have a high enough speed stat, well, you're just going to die to them because they're almost impossible to avoid in certain circumstances. And speaking of stuff that is hard to avoid... Yeah, sometimes you can get hit by these lasers even as they're fading out, so this is really not a great thing. Okay, so I guess we're not gonna le give the left hand any kind of chance because we got instead a broken magnet. It kinda works because... All it does is attract money to you, but hey, it's still better than nothing, and at this point I think it still has more worth than the left hand. One of these days I will probably do a proper showcase of this item, but I have the worst luck with it. Oh, yeah, I'm surely going to go to one red heart in order to have no additional benefit whatsoever. Yeah, I'm sorry, but this is not a time to pick up the dead cat. Instead, we're just going to pick up whatever the key beggar will throw at us, because in these playthroughs you have nothing better to do with your key, so you might as well chance it. Occasionally you might get a good item out of the deal. Oh, okay, that was a good time for you to finally cough up your item, just as you're about to get nuke. Maybe this is what I had to do all along in order to get something out of him. So, we can either throw bombs at them, or... We can just throw a bomb in the middle of them, and I mean lay a regular bomb, and I'm pretty sure that we will have pretty much instantly wiped out these enemies. Oh, it's Loki! Always so enthusiastic, despite being cut in half. For some reason, this is one of the bosses that you see the least in the game. Whenever you get to the later... Areas of the game, like the dark room or the chest, you will usually just fight like two or three low keys, but you will never fight a bunch of low keys. And I guess that's a fair point because, hey, these ones, I mean, the regular low key guy will just spawn the flies that explode, and these ones just unleash the regular big red flies that explode into a bunch of projectiles upon dying, which I guess is more annoying to deal with and not as fun to work against when it comes to your enemies. Oh, let's play the arcades in slow motion. Oh, or not, because you know where we're going with this. Yeah, this would have been a great playthrough to get uh, money his power. Money equal power, because at this point we will be stronger than everyone on Earth. 
So yeah, we have two ways that we could deal with this guy. We can either time our shots really well like that, or we could have also bombed the boulder that was on the bottom right corner and mirror all of our movements so that it will walk on the spikes in the top left corner. Oh, good thing that time decided to slow down because honestly, if time was fastened up all the way to the top, this room might have been troublesome, but... Hey, now it's perfect. Also, yeah, that's what the mysterious candy is all about. This is a uh, trinket that just makes it so that you lay poop everywhere. It's about as useful as you think it is. And yeah, at this point, we're gonna bomb all of the mushrooms because... Hey, we can still get a mini mushroom out of those, which will make us even faster, and additionally, it will also increase the range of our bombs, which will make it even more convenient to fight enemies, but at this point, I don't think it's gonna happen. At this point, I don't really think that I've stuck to one single trinket in this uh, entire run for more than one or two floor. We're constantly swapping things, and well, this is always fun to see. But yeah, at this point we've already saved up on a lot of health just by having the Holy Mantle. This is the most valuable of items that you can get, and whenever we'll get to a character which is called the Lost, well, that item is gonna work magic, and fuck this room. I honestly do not want to deal with those uh, enemies right now because it's gonna take a while and I'm not gonna get anything good out of it. At this point the only thing that matters is to get out of here. And yeah, that's another good practical use of Holy Mantle. Take a hit just in order to make a room a little easier to do, for absolutely no cost or anything. The Holy Mantle is also a pretty good item that will encourage you to start playing a little bit more aggressively because you're not gonna have the same fear of losing health upon colliding on an enemy and honestly, how can you rally against that? Because blowing a whole lot of things up and playing... Oh my god, just do something about... Ah, I hate these enemies whenever they just don't want to do anything. So yeah, it's mom's art. Honestly, this is just going to be a long fight, but it's not really going to be a hard one. We can take our time here, we're gonna blow all of the enemies, or we can let mom's art do the job for us. And yeah, we can also speed up the process a bit with our bombs, which at this point is the best source of the damage that we have. The best way to do it is just to lay down a bomb and then push it with your, with your body. And it's even easier to pull off when you have the remote detonator because you have absolutely no time constraint in order to do so. You just lay down the bomb and everything is gonna work out at your whim. And yeah, speaking of things that are working at our whim, yeah. At this point the fight is over because mom's art is not gonna retreat back anymore in order to go into hiding. And yeah, didn't even use the rotating brimstone, so all in all, that was a pretty easy victory. Both against this boss and both for this challenge. And we get a marvelous item as a reward. The chaos card will allow you to decimate all of your enemies in one hit. At the cost of only being able to use that once. But hey, it's a really great item and whenever there are bosses that you hate, this card is for you. Just throw it at someone's face. You'll love it. So, we've played as everyone we can play as so far, so we're gonna have to revisit an older character. I've asked my viewers to do it for me, and let's see the results. No!